All right guys, welcome back to another reefer trailer build video here. Part number four. Hope you're enjoying this little series of build videos on this uh, reefer trailer of mine and uh, maybe getting some ideas for your own builds. So anyway, I thought I'd stop and make another video here and share, share with you guys what I've done since the last part and uh, just kind of go over everything in a little detail before it gets all put together. So um, if you recall from the last video, the, the body and the chassis were attached, so I've, I've taken the, the two apart uh, mainly so I could uh, clean up the, the back end like I was saying here. I wanted to add those those uh, doors of mine that I had uh, designed. So I got rid of those Tamiya doors. I didn't like the, uh, you know, the handles and the hinges. I thought they kind of looked funny. So I've got my own 3D printed doors. I'll talk about those in a little bit. And then... Um, just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the chassis here while I got it taken apart. And you can see the air brakes in a little more detail. I mean, I know you've seen these before in, on my flatbed trailer, but you can kind of see them here in a little more detail without the, uh, without the body on top of it. Because once that body goes on there, it'll unfortunately kind of get hidden away, but you'll still see a lot of the details. But anyway, you can kind of see all the, all the parts here, the little S cams there that go into the uh, drum. Um, the slack adjusters, the push rods. I got the uh, the brake chambers on there, and then you can see the uh, sorry for all the shaking too. I mean, there you can see the air lines, and then the air tank down there. So basically, just uh, in, on the on the flatbed trailer, I've designed these to bolt right into the existing holes. But uh, this one here, um, it's a different frame. So I just basically sat that cross member right on top of this. Uh, the, the, the cross member that holds that air tank on, I, I sat it right on top of this existing cross member because this was a three axle trailer and I've taken that one axle out. So I basically glued it right to those and, it, and, it's, and it's on there really good, you can kind of see. I mean, it's not going anywhere, right? Even these things too, they're, they're on there pretty good. I mean, obviously if you, you know, smash into a rock going pretty quick, it, you'd probably mess this up. But Anyway, there you go, you can kind of see how, how they turned out. Um, I've added some mud flaps on there now too. And uh, disregard all this stuff here. If you guys know, I got that Facebook page where I build accessories for some folks. So in between building stuff for people, I, I like to work on my own little projects here. But um, so this guy's getting some straps, and then uh, looks like this guy's getting some some little DG placards. But anyway, so I wanted to show you guys what I've done uh, to this thing here. So there's the air brakes. That's on there. Um, they're on there. The, the mud flaps are on there. I'll show you guys a little bit of footage after this here of some of the, the, the parts of it going together. I mean, no particular order, but I've got some cross members built, 3D printed, that fit in there really nice. They worked out really good. Um, these as well, I'm kind of fiddling around with an idea to, to, uh, to install some of this e-track stuff or logistics or whatever you want to call it into the trailer. You know how you see you see these things, maybe you'll see one or two rows of it on the inside of the trailer. So I basically found some scrap styrene that I had, some really thin stuff here. And then what I was thinking of doing was just gluing that. I mean, it's just photocopied. Nothing special, but I think it'll look pretty good. You're not gonna see too much in there anyway. But I'll glue that on there like that and then just kind of run the track down the inside. So if that works out, that's how that's gonna go together. Um, what else do we got here? Nothing really done to the reefer since that last part. You saw the little green light that I, that I installed. Um, running lights, haven't touched any of the lighting yet until I get all this figured out, but this was a bit of a pain in the ass, but it had to be done. I mean, if you recall, I bought this, this trailer as a, as a ready to run or just a, com a completely assembled trailer. And if I would have known what I know now, I mean, it would have been so much easier just to zip off, you know, or make those cuts. Uh, to these panels while they were, you know, not assembled because this was a bit of a pain in the ass. But anyway, it's done now. It turned out really good. And I'll show you, this is kind of probably the, the biggest change to this trailer is this back end here. As I was saying, I, I 3D printed um, from my C-can, I elongated this door frame as well as the doors. So this was my first crack at it. Wasn't super happy with how these turned out. I mean, they're still really good, but you can kind of see some of the, some of the print lines in there. And, uh, you know, with a little bit of sanding and all that, you, you probably get them to look a lot better, but I couldn't be bothered. 
So I went ahead and I printed some new ones and you can kind of see the difference between just the doors, 17 hours versus uh, 12 hours. So still quite a bit of print time involved in these. So um, I'll probably get this on my Facebook page eventually and uh, see if anybody's interested in giving me a few bucks for it. And maybe they can use it on, on a build of their own. But anyway, you can kind of see the difference. Just a little bit nicer. But anyway, I think this looks much nicer than those funny looking Tamiya. I mean, nothing against the Tamiya guys who uh, really like those Tamiya trailers, those box trailers. But I just, I just couldn't stand that, that look. With those door handles, they had like a two-piece door handle and then those weird hinges on the side. So I think this looks a lot more scale. And when it's all finished up, It'll be painted, I'll, I'll try to paint it with a nice shiny uh, mirror finish like you see on a lot of those reefer trailers. And then of course get the, uh, the little marker lights in there. And then I got a really nice uh, idea or design, not idea, I've already finished these handles on my container build which I'll show you guys a video of coming up, maybe in the next couple videos, but uh, a really nice scale looking uh, door handle uh, system. Just some, some rod, steel rod uh, with a little soldered piece here for the handle and, and they look really good so and then I'll probably put a little more uh, detail on it with some stickers you know like the, the caution wide turn and blah 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 so um, that'll be that you can kind of see here it's, it just operates with, with these little just some little screws in the hinges there and they, they close really nice lines up really good and um, I'll probably just use some epoxy or something to attach this to the uh, can see here it's just that's all it is so I'll probably use some epoxy to attach it to the uh, to the to the trailer here but all the dimensions are right I mean it's nice and square and, and uh, I mean once I get that roof on there it'll look really good so anyway that's that back door and door frame and then for the interior I've got a couple other things done um, well not really but I got some ideas plan for this. I found this this scrap aluminum. We were, we were at a job site and uh, I found this bin full of these aluminum pieces and I just scooped them up because I, I knew they'd come in handy somewhere and I think they're going to come in handy for this build here because you know what, what better than to add a, a real aluminum floor. So I got that going and then another thing I've, I've worked on was the, uh, was the air chute. You know that big white uh, plastic piece on the on the ceiling on the interior so I found this the soil bag which I, I think might work really good here you can kind of see this is the, uh, the, the, the the roof panel and then I like this uh, material I think it's the closest thing that resembles that air chute so I'll find a way to it's got these little holes perforated holes in there which I don't like but whatever we'll, we'll start with this and see how it but you know what I mean like well I'll put some little screws along the whole the whole thing to simulate that air chute. And then um, I'm going to do the uh, the return bulkhead in here and then maybe a little fan because I'd, I'd like to I'd like to get some dry ice or some smoke or something going on in here and hang some things in here. Everything from like pop, a whole pop and uh, milk and uh, you know maybe even some some slabs of uh, cattle or something, beef or pork or something like that. So I, I got some really cool ideas to have a nice refrigerated uh, load in there. And then when you open up the doors, you'll see the steam come out. So I think that'll be really cool. Um, well, I know the video's dragging on, but anyway, guys, I'll just show you a little, probably missing something, but anyway, that's enough for, for now. You get the point. Here's a, a little, a little uh, pile of all the parts that I've uh, accumulated for for the build. You've probably seen some of them already, but I'll just go over some of the the new ones here. This is the uh, the air plate and for the airlines and the and the glad hands. So that turned out pretty good. That'll go on, that'll go on this mounted on this front piece. If you recall, I made this piece to to uh, hide those existing holes. So just a little piece of, of thin styrene. Um, here's just a little cheapy fan. I think it's gonna work really good to maybe blow some of the uh, some of the smoke out the back doors and to kind of have that that look too. I might paint it black again. I'm not too sure about that. Here's the uh, 
nice simple little three D printed uh, piece that I designed uh, for, the, uh, for the between the dolly legs, the little cross members. Uh, the wing plates, you guys saw those already. Um, this is the little box for the. Uh, there's some styrene that I bent, and uh, there's a little. There's the little box there with the green light, the indicator light. Here's the fuel tank. It's gonna get slipped underneath, and like I was saying before, all it is is a couple of 3D printed pieces I glued together and then uh, sanded, painted, and I made that little bracket there. And then I just used some pinstripe tape. Lino tape makes this stuff. Um, the black underneath simulates that weather stripping, and then the, uh, the chrome is just uh, lino tape. So if you can find that stuff anymore, it's hard to come by, but I think that, that, uh, that looks pretty good. So, And then of course the bumper. This thing turned out really good. I'm happy with this. So just waiting on those lenses from Tamiya to show up. And then uh, I can get that installed as well. And then it'll all start kind of coming together. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I know it's a little long, but like I said, I wanted to include as much of this footage as I could. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. And uh, see you guys in the next video. With us, the hilarious Tom Green. Hey, thanks. How are you, Tom? Good. I'm doing real good. Thanks for having me on the show. So happy to have you. Yeah. Adam, how are you? It's good to yeah. see you again. You know what I mean? Good. Yeah, I know. Good. I'm from the Tempe uh, Improv and the, the Comedy Store. That's yeah. right. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm just helping Norman. They came for High Times Magazine. I'm like, no, that's cool. this podcast. It was great to see Norm McDonald back, and Super Dave was the perfect choice as first guest. Lose the douchebag.